All right, everybody, welcome to a new segment, or rather series of segments. This is module three. Now we'll talk about the pure substances, and also I will introduce you a very, very important phase diagrams, as well as the property tables at the back of the book, the uh, textbook that you will be studying, okay? So these concepts are very, very important, and for you to pass the course, you must understand these things, okay? So this, this module three is very, very important. Just wanna highlight that for you, okay? But I said pure substances, why don't I start by defining what a pure substance is, okay? So this is basically a substance that has a homogeneous, homogeneous and fixed chemical composition throughout its, its uh, you know, itself, okay, throughout. So, um, what are some of the examples for this? So, this can be pure chemicals. That's one uh, side of the coin. Pure chemicals that exist in the periodic table. It can be carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, argon, whatever. All these uh, chemicals that are in the periodic table, these are pure chemicals to begin with, so they will be pure substances. Okay? Um, in addition to that, I can have compounds too. It doesn't have to be a pure chemical. Okay? For instance, water, um, I don't know, carbon dioxide, etc. These are also pure substances. Okay. One thing to highlight, and we do take advantage of this, but this doesn't mean that substance, uh, you know, must have one phase. I talked about phase in module one. Substance may exist in more than a single phase. Okay. It can be multi-phase. That the chemical composition must be the same for all of these phases that exist. So that's as long as that is satisfied, I will be able to have a pure substance. Okay. One uh, kind of um, actually a deal breaker um, in this case that we do study here is what you just uh, uh, seen in the screen. It is air. Okay. And, and technically speaking, this is not a pure substance. The reason is we have 79% nitrogen. We have 21% oxygen. And we have trace elements, you know, inside of an air. And technically, this is not a pure substance, okay? But we're going to treat it as one. That's important to know. So we're going to treat this air as, as a substance. And this can only be done under some particular circumstances, okay? We cannot just do it every single time. I'll give you an example. So let's say that I have a cool and humid. Uh, in Florida, we have a lot of humid air, right? So if I cool it, what will happen is if I go below something called the dew point temperature, actually the water vapor within the air is starting to condense, okay? And so I will have distinctly two different properties. I will have a water and air. So that's not going to work for air, okay? So above the dew temperature, that was just one example, we will be able to treat the air as an ideal uh, or rather pure substances, okay? Um, and before I introduce you the phase uh, diagrams, I want to obviously, you know, just touch upon the phase. I talked about this in module one, but I mean, you kind of know this. I don't want to talk about it a lot, but we have solid, liquid, as well as the gaseous, gaseous phase, right? And we said that the combination of these two, you know, can be studied under the definition of the width, okay? Um, so I want to uh, start getting into the uh, uh, phase change processes as well as the associated property diagrams. Let's write it in here. Property diagrams. And the, the, the thing that I want to really highlight here is in thermodynamics, this is our main focus. It doesn't mean we're not going to completely ignore solids, but this is our main focus. And I discussed the reasons in uh, module 1 and 2 saying that I will be able to obtain some kind of a useful energy out of these, even though they are stationary objects, okay? But uh, that was a tangent point I'm making, but let's talk about the property diagrams. For that, a very typical example that we, you know, like pretty much every book uses is this. So I have a, a common piston cylinder device, okay? And I have, let's say, water over here, right? Water is the most common uh, pure substance that we study in thermodynamics. Obviously, we have refrigerants and etc. We'll discuss those, but then let's start with the water. Okay, 
And let's say that it is at 25 degrees C and 0.1 megapascals. So basically, this is give or take right at the um, uh, atmospheric pressure 1 atm, right? 0.1 megapascals, or is equal to 100 kilopascals. Okay. And the goal is this. So let's say that the red usually indicates the heating, right? So I'm, I'm, I just put this on to a burner, and I'm heating this, right? So the question that I am, uh, you know, posing you now is, what will happen to the uh, liquid, okay? And I, uh, you know, in order for me to help me, I want to highlight this one more time. The reason why we have phase diagrams is not because so you can make a mistake in the exam and we can cut points from you, okay? The reason why we have phase diagrams is actually it's going to make my life so much easier compared to the strictly mathematical approach. I will be able to visualize, okay? And again, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I'll comment from that side. We are kind of much better when we see something and we can, you know, uh, experience it as mechanical engineers. Some other yeah, electrical is a little bit different story. And there will be multiple things that I can write here. I can write pressure, I can write temperature, specific volume if I want to, okay? But the one that I'm going to do now is I'm heating it up, is I'm going to look at the temperature and what happens to the, let's say, volume. But I can also, as the mass, and I'm taking this as completely sealed so there will be no mass transfer of, of water from here. Um, I can also take this as specific volume or simply the volume itself, okay? And now what I want to do is uh, look at the case where it starts at 25 and you do know this very well. This is going to start to vaporize at 100 degrees, right? So let's see what will happen when I start at, uh, you know, let's say this point is uh, 25 uh, right on this y-axis of temperature. And I have, I'm, I'm plotting Celsius, obviously. This is 100 degrees where it will start to uh, boil or vaporize, right? So what will happen is, in fact, you may be used to this, or this may be very intuitive to you, is that the density will go down slightly, not a lot. Or uh, if I'm talking about the specific weight or the volume, as long as mass is constant, it's the same thing in terms of the trend is that I will have some this. my temperature is going to go up, no question about that, okay? But it's not going to, you know, like, like this maybe, I don't know where 200 is, but let's assume it's here, okay? So actually, let's move this a little bit, okay. Um, so this is where my 100 degrees C is, right? Um, okay, so I have increased it in a linear fashion, okay? And that kind of makes sense, it's going to expand as um, increasing the temperature. When I reach 100 degrees C, any small heat addition will change my, you know, water, the liquid water, into a phase, into the vapor phase, right? So in this here, I'm talking about the initiation of that temperature, constant temperature, constant pressure, phase change process, okay? So I have absolutely, low, like, actually, let me uh, redraw this. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it'll do just fine, I guess, is this. So I have over here. At 100 degrees C, you can see I still have water. I don't have any vapor over here. This is completely water, exactly what I have. The volume is slightly higher because the specific volume is higher for a constant mass, right? But I don't have any vapor over here. So then, if I proceed, you may remember from your physics or chemistry courses that it's going to actually, the phase change will take place at a constant temperature, okay? And in this particular case of 1 atm or 0.1 megapascal, I'm going to have that change at 100 degrees C, okay? And as I continue to add the heat to the system, now the water will vaporize, and I have a liquid phase and a vapor phase. If I redraw this, which is actually not that fun, to be honest with you, but yeah, let's, let's pretend it is. Um, so I will have some water over here. I don't know, depends on where I am. Let's say I'm here. I will have some water over here, but in addition to that, I will have, uh, you know, um, the vapor. I will have this one, it will be H2O vapor, okay, and this one will be liquid HTO, H2O, and this is actually still a pure substance, I'm going to highlight that, okay, I can have multiple phases as I mentioned when I started this segment, okay, so then what will happen is looking at this particular point, let's say I'm here, or I said here, so I'm going to continue, 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 and there will be absolutely no liquid left at some particular point, so I will have a complete 100% of H2O vapor, in my system, okay, and it will be at 100 degrees C, right, it's a constant temperature phase change process, 
and I will actually let's actually call these so this is called the saturated vapor very important terminology saturated vapor and it's not gonna come you as a surprise but this is called the saturated liquid okay um, that particular point is what it's called um, so this 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 region we typically call liquid right and call it a but now I have a saturated liquid so we want to be much more uh, you know uh, focused so I'm gonna call this um, compressed liquid okay so that region is called the compressed liquid and I will call this region that you're looking at will be the saturated liquid plus vapor mixture I will have that the mixture content of it for in terms of the gas is zero over here hundred percent right over there okay but then uh, in, in, in theory or in application I don't have to stop there so what I can do is I can keep going I can add heat to my system right I don't have to stop at 100 degrees C let's say I'm interested in a 200 degrees C system right so what will happen is okay then my system is gonna go like this okay so it's gonna keep going and this is gonna be called the superheated vapor Please do know these definitions very, very well because when we look at the um, uh, tables, it will be listed for superheated vapor, saturated liquid vapor mixture, compressed liquid. So you really have to know what you're talking about to really understand what we're looking at over here. Okay? And as I mentioned, this this doesn't have to be temperature. This can be pressure uh, as well. But the, the the you know the way it's going to look is going to be different. But this kind of does it for the temperature and uh, specific volume or volume itself okay um, so now what I want to do is actually I want to redraw this whole uh, TV diagram T in terms of the temperature that's what I mean and the V what I mean is it, you know you take it that's your decision but the most common one in thermodynamics is this which is the specific volume okay so if I, uh, you know, let's do it with different colors because it looks, uh, I think, nice. That is my opinion. So this is what I did over there. This needs to be continuous like that, right? Um, so, okay. So, but this was at one very specific uh, pressure. Maybe my application space requires me to have another pressure. Okay, fine. Then what I'm going to do is let's say that I do one megapascal. So it's going to be like this. Then. Okay. It's going to come here. Exit too much now but that's fine like this uh, let's call this one megapascal and maybe my application is gonna go to five megapascal I don't know I'm making these numbers up obviously so it's gonna be like this and then I'm gonna go to here and then maybe a little bit more and I'll be like that this is the compressed liquid I still have saturated liquid I have the saturated vapor the mixture of those two over here and I have the superheated vapor over here same thing okay so if I keep going, obviously there's not just discrete uh, pressures. I can just keep repeating this um, un until I have, uh, uh, you know, like different points obtained for, let's say, this point, right? So I'm looking at this point, this point, and this point, and then this, 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 right? I can keep going down, up, down, and up in the pressure. And what will happen is if I do it, I'll get something like this. Hope that I will be able to capture this nicely. Yeah, it's gonna do it. Okay. So this is going to be the way that I will draw and this is called for water at least this is called the steam dome because I have a dome shape right so and I want to highlight over here this is the you know this area is the compressed liquid you know this this is a saturated liquid vapor mixture or region and I will have superheated vapor right over there okay so also I want to introduce a definition here you can see there's a lot going on in this particular segment so please uh, you know take note of these things is um, when I'm changing the phase let's pick 0.1 megapascals because I'm interested in the 180 m and this is 100 degrees C I know this value right so what happens is once I reach 100 this temperature stays the constant right as well as the pressure you look at it this is the constant pressure lines isobaric lines so what that means is in here the pressure and temperature is constant and actually what I just said is uh, 
it's listed for us to uh, uh, observe, okay? And that is called uh, P saturated, you know, and T saturated. And you can see those are constant in that particular saturated liquid vapor uh, mixture region, okay? I'm not sure you did realize this one, but one interesting observation over here is this doesn't go up to infinity like that, you know, like forever like that. You know, it's just kind of like uh, this, this, this converges over here. So that also has a significance in our analysis and what actually that particular point is called, this, this very top, actually it's like, you know, a little bit to the left, but that particular point is called critical point, okay? So what happens is above these, or rather at that particular point, you know, these two kind of merged. You can kind of see it like it's getting shorter, 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 and then bam, I have the exact same point for the, and I'm gonna write it this way, um, saturated vapor and the saturated liquid are the same points, okay? So if I have, can I have pressure above that? Sure, we'll talk about whatever the pressure required for different materials, but um, yeah, so in that particular case, let's do another color, and the phase change is going to be like this, so it's going to go like that, still the same, and then it's going to do like that, do you see? So it's not even touching the dome, so it's just passing by through the dome, okay? And these critical points are, uh, you know, uh, well known, okay? Um, and I want to write for the water, for because we use this a lot, and I call this a steam dome, right? The pressure needs to be 22.06 megapascals, which is fairly high, when I highlight that. Temperature needs to be 373.95 degrees C. So again, not, not that, you know, walk in the park to have 373.95 degrees C, right? Um, and I can have this at that particular point, because I'm looking at, let's say, the specific weight over here. So you can see there's a one constant value for it. So if I go down over here, and this value will be 0 0.003106. Obviously, 0 0.03106, the unit will be in SI, will be meter cubed per kilogram, reverse of the density, right? So, if you're interested in, like, refrigerants or other, uh, you know, pure substances, then you have to refer to a book. The one I use is Chengal, the ninth edition. And if you look at this one, I don't think it's going to change from edition to edition, but you need to look in the appendix A1, for this high, and you need to look at the A1E as British gravitational. So this is appendix one, this is appendix two, but A1AE in the appendix two is what you need to refer to to obtain critical points for your um, pure substance, okay? A bunch of them are listed there. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here. It's been a long segment, it's longer than I thought it will be, okay? I'll be back with the part two of discussing the phase diagrams. Thank you.